everybody and uh, welcome back to my channel and today we're going to talk about a sote i hope that's how i pronounce it okay <laughs> yeah but it's the character that's coming you know very soon okay she will be here in a couple days so i guess this is a perfect time to talk about her you know let's have a deeper understanding about her character and her kid so by the end of the video you can decide like is she the right character for you or not to start off let's talk a little bit into her background so isode is the youngest daughter of the noble family of vienna she's very well known for her immersed artistic talent and is vienna's most celebrated opera star okay. so she's not only a great performer she also like conduct like a lot of plays and a lot of performance. The funny thing to mention is is so they never plays a role on the stage because she invites spirit to sing through her body and to perform through her body. Yeah, I just found funny because I just feel like you have some help or cheat when you play the game, you know, that's just funny. Yeah, that's how she performs. And apparently a lot of people like it. So Good job, Isode. Well done, well done. <laughs> okay, with that out of the way, let's move on into Isode's kit. First of all, Isode is a six star spirit type character that deals reality type damage. And even though she can deal very respectable damage, but her main role is still considered as a support class. So just to keep that in mind, very similar to Six, Isolde is an all-rounder who can perform a variety of functions. On top of that, being the neutral spirit element, she's easy to slot in almost any team or situations, and it's a good investment for any account. That's why Isolde, along with Six and Tooth Fairy, are considered as an almost must-pull character. So. Now you know why. Okay, let us move on to her next part, which is her role in the team. As you can see here, she can apply a lot of burn, she can support the team, and she also considers as a DPS or sub DPS, you want to say. Okay, so that means she can deal very respectable damage. You'll be surprised. Okay, okay let us move on to her skill and her ultimate is a massive debuff which inflict 5 stack of burn on all enemies and an additional 5 stack of burn on the main target so that means 10 on the main target and 5 on everybody else on top of that they also grant 1 stack of rousing morale on all allies which if you have a knife you know that means increase 50% damage so which is really good and then cast intermezzo as a follow-up attack which is deal 50% reality damage to all enemies and for every stack of burn on the target it deals additional 10% so at first it sounds low but when you have a lot of burns it's actually pretty high and for every excess stack of burn on the main target this intermezzo gain incantation might of 15% oh so I see damage on top of damage so yeah as you can see that's where her DPS came from. Okay, next let's look at her incantations. And her first incantation is a D's buff. It's also a massive attack that deals 150, 225, 300 reality damage to two enemies, and also inflict two stack of burn on them. Okay. On top of that, when in the interlude status, this skill gain penetration rate of 30% and when in finale status the penetration rate increased to 50% so as you can see the damage can be quite big okay so this is a very good skill okay now you might ask what's interlude and what's finale okay so interlude is at the start of the round gains three stack of break connection which means uh, when the ally attacks it applies three stack of burning onto the enemies and when the enemy burn stack reach 6 or higher, cast Intermezzo. So 
So that means that's the 50% damage on every enemy, right? Remember? And the finale, it's, it's just an upgrade of that. So it's the same thing. At the start of the round, bring three stack of Pregnition and one stack of Power Burst. And Power Burst is the 25% damage increase. And when the same thing, when a burn stack reach 6 or higher, casting to Mizzle, and this on top of that, it also gains incantation mine 15% for this attack. So more damage again. See, damage on top damage, buff on top of buff. Wonderful. Okay, let's move on to her second incantation. And her second incantation is a debuff. It's a mass debuff, which inflict critical defense minus 25%. 35% and 50% and also it reduced the reality defense by 15% all the way through but if the target's in burning status it becomes 20% on all enemy for two rounds so that's really good actually so she have damage buff debuff so it's almost like six so she's really good at supporting and then also able to deal some pretty good damage. And if you think that's all so they can do, wait until you see her inheritance. And now let's move on to her inheritance. Okay. So at inside one, okay, so when the battle starts, she immediately enter the pre dude status and inflict three stack of burn on all enemies. And at end of the round, when the highest enemy Burn stacks, resolve, and rule stacks. Gain an equal amount of heat stacks. Okay, when holding 15 stack of heat, the prelude status change to interlude status. So basically, is when she enter battle, she start performing right away. So prelude is like the pre-show. You know, when you show the, those commercials, right? That's a prelude. So that's a, something you starts before the main event. And then when she holds 15, it becomes interlude. So the main show starts, you know. And of course, later on you will see finale to finish, you know, like climax, right? So let's see what's the difference between it because it is confusing with all these fancy terms, right? So first of all, preview, it's at the start turn, grants three stack of pre-ignition. So just able to let your team apply more burning on the enemy. Interlude is also you will have follow up attacks. Intermezzo is the follow up attacks. So finale is more, even more. Okay, so she have the three stack of burn, and then one stack of power boost to all allies. So power boost is the twenty five percent more damage. And when the enemy burns stack reach six, same thing, six or higher, cast intermezzo. Okay, so. The follow up attacks, and then it gains incantation my plus fifteen percent for this attack. Okay, so it just means you have a more powerful version of the follow up attack. Yeah, so that's her inside one. Pretty powerful, pretty confusing, but powerful. <laughs> and then now let's move on to inside two. It just basically a attack plus five percent when she enter battle. So that's basic. So let's move on to our Inside 3, which is one of the climax <laughs> that I was talking about earlier, right? So when holding 40 heat, so every time when enemy lose stack of burning, she keep building heat, right? So when sh she accumulate 40 heat stacks, the interlude becomes finale, okay? So we talk about finale is a lot of see, addition buffs, stronger follow-up attacks so if you are building XO day it is recommended to go to her inside three as fast as you can but the only thing is i don't know how fast she accumulates those heat so it might not be that important but we'll check tomorrow i guess when i actually can pull her so we have to wait and see okay so next let's move on to her portrait she's really good piece here already as a support same thing, right? Like six. But uh, a good stopping point will be her P2 because it just makes her support easier and better. After that, it just pretty much just 
make her into more DPS. So if you just want to use her as a support, P2 is a good stopping point. But of course, if you are well or you want to make her into more on her damage side, it's recommended to go P5. Next, let's look at some of her side chip choices. And of course, the best choice is knock on the door, which is her personal BIS. But if you are able to maintain two negative status on your enemy, and Blast of Mirror of Night might be a better choice. But for if your team is not focused on applying those negative status, then knock on the door, it's better. And of course, since uh, she's a, being a spirit element character, Balance Place is also a good option if you don't have this one or this one. But most likely <laughs> you will have this because it will be giving you for free. Right? So yeah, give her this if you can. But if you don't want to, then this is also some good option here. You know, after all that, it might be still very confusing of what Isolde can do, right? So here's the summary, very brief summary of what she can bring to your team. So first of all, Isolde is very good at applying burning stacks. So that means, uh, especially if your main DPS is Spesodia, because she needs those burn stacks to do more damage, right? So, if you want to really see your specialty at her max potential, then Exode is probably considered as an almost must pull. Okay, so I would say take, ignore the almost. Okay, it's a must pull. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, specialty team especially. Burning, right? So yeah, you, she's really good in that team. And secondly, uh, Exode can fit in your follow-up attack team because she have a very strong high damage follow-up attacks so yeah 37 Jew team maybe later on Lucy other things right? so she can fit in, in that team as well besides the burning and besides the follow-up attacks she also can debuff your enemy so especially the quit defense and reality defense so she's pretty good for any team, but she's a little more towards the real DPS. And then the next thing is she have a buff called Power Burst, which is like the 25% damage boost. And that happens a lot in Finale. So you had to wait a little bit to build up to that point. But after that, especially a long boss battle, oh, this is, <laughs> this buff is very useful. And then, if you think that's all the buffs she can give, then you'll be wrong. <laughs> she also has the Rousing Morale, so just like a Knight, that her ultimate can provide a 50% boost to your team, uh, with the exception of uh, she don't require you to kill the enemy to do that, like unlike a Knight, right? So she has like a built-in a Knight buff. <laughs> See, with all that for on one character, that's really impressive, you know. Okay, next we'll move on to my personal favorite section of the video. It's where I give my own personal thoughts and opinions. Yeah, so this is the Duke rating section. Welcome. <laughs> okay, so as a Risode, you know, we already talked about her kid, talked about her characters and stuff. Now we're just going to give some ratings. So first of all, let's start with appearance okay so for her appearance i give her 10 out of 10 because it is a perfection indeed of whoever designed this character i really like it there's nothing i can pick you know it's perfect so appearance is 10 out of 10 for sure and next we'll look at into her character you know her stories and stuff right so her character overall it's pretty good too i really like it just some like little minor point is uh, she gave me the feel of like assassin or like you know someone who will betray you a little bit you know like especially her ultimate right the slash and like evil and i don't know i just feel a little bit just a little tiny part that scares me a little bit so i give her 8 out of 10. next we 
likes is flexibility. You know, like how well she can fit in any situation or any team. And overall, she's I would give a ten out of ten. But I just thought of oh yeah, one of her debuffs is more towards reality type damage. Right? So if her debuff, it's both. You know, like defense, just defense general, like for both mental and then it'll be ten out of ten for sure. But just for that little tiny bit. I know I'm a little bit more picky, but so I put her 9 out of 10. And then next is the longevity. So how long this character you can use. You know, some character, especially some DPS, like see like Juice here and then you all of a sudden you have Wind Song coming soon or Lucy, you know, it'll be easily replaced, right? But for Isolde, she's like multi-purpose support and usually support is a little harder to be replaced. As you can see, Tooth Fairy, I know she's a healer, but Tooth Fairy 6, you know, like when you use those characters, you'll last for a while. At least from now till version 2.0, she's still one of the top picks. You don't have to worry about, oh, if I pull this character, is it worth it? Because pretty soon I'll have to pull another character and bench her, you know? So don't worry about it. She will be there for a, a long while. So 2.0 it's like at least another half year away, right? So and lastly let's look at her meta. I just put a meta section. It's like how good she is to use, right? And it's 10 out of 10. Like one of the best support. Along with six, right? So she's like one of the top support because she's very flexible and she also as well as she can do many things at once, right? So yeah, that's my rating for the character. And I hope it helps. I know it may be a little bias here and maybe my own knowledge is not there. I don't know everything about her. So, but for my own opinion right now, this is my rating. Well, with that, it brings us to the end of the video. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope after you watch this video, you can make a decision like, should you pull so day or not? And yeah, if you are polling for Isolde, I wish you the best of luck. And I'm going to poll for her, and I'm going to poll her P2 if I can. Okay, I'm going to make the video very soon. Well, I hope you liked the video. And if you do, please don't forget to click like and subscribe. I'll be really appreciated. I hope you have a good day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.